Thursday before Thanksgiving, in about exactly seven days, you're gonna have to deal with family. I'm sorry about that, it's not good. Um, nobody really likes Thanksgiving because of the weird uncle, except for me, because I am the weird uncle. And it works, works out well for me. We have got a stack set tonight. We have Max Tidy, all the way from Michigan. Yeah. We have Jason Staples, my close personal friend. Yes. We have, all the way from Chicago, Illinois, Zach Boyce. Yes. How did I get him? I asked him. That's how it works. Um, before we get started, folks, I need to tell you something really, really important. Uh, I'm a vegan. I don't have a joke. If I use the microphone, I don't have to go tell each and every one of you individually. Because that's what vegans do. I'm not a good vegan. I gotta tell you, um, you know that Impossible Whopper they've got at Burger King? Um, so it's, it's basically a burger that's not made of meat. I went and ordered one the other day, and the cashier told me they were out. And uh, I just whispered to the cashier, I said, okay, just give me a regular Whopper and put it in the Impossible Wrapper. <laughs> and then uh, I, of course, held it up and said, got the last one. So any vegans in there wouldn't point me out and call me out on social media or something like that. Um, most vegans have a way more altruistic reason to be vegan. They, um, they care about animals, they care about greenhouse gases and the earth and stuff like that. Um, the only reason I'm vegan is I want to be the last living baby boomer. So I want, you know, I want to be like 139 years old due to my eating habits and modern medicine. And I want people to come interview me and say, um, how did you do it? And I'm like, well, um, I hated millennials and I ate well. And, and that, that's, that's kept me going for 139 years. I also want to make the very last boomer social media post. It's going to be um, LOL JKAF. And click and then I'm going to die. You guys realize, there's a lot of young folks out there, you guys realize baby boomers are using social media, right? Do you see it? Um, first, I wanna apologize on behalf of all of us. Um, I, I am a baby boomer, but I was born at the tail end, so I have a little bit of self-awareness, and I can see what we're doing, and I know it's wrong. Um, I know that baby boomers are very proud that we grew up before the internet. And we absolutely love talking about how proud we are on the internet. <laughs> we drank out of a hose, we talked, we rode bikes, who cares? That's, that, that's the whole boomer mantra. We grew up before the internet, so let's talk about it on the internet. Um, I don't know if any of you have any boomer friends on social media, but let, let me ask you if you've seen this. Have you ever seen somebody like and share their own post? Anybody? Okay, I've seen it. And I'm gonna tell you why that happens. Because when a baby boomer makes a post on social media, let, let's just say Facebook, because that's the only thing we know how to use. Um, when we make a post on Facebook, we are expecting that everybody that we know is sitting on our page, refreshing it constantly, waiting for us to say something. And when we don't get a reaction within 30 seconds, click like, because that's gonna put it back up to the top, right? 30 more seconds, no response, I'm gonna share it. So when you finally do see our post, you see that I made a post saying um, there's no better band than Led Zeppelin, and then you're gonna see a post right under it. I shared the post that there's no better band than Led Zeppelin. That's just what we do, that's how we operate. 
we expect things to happen much more quickly than they actually do, and, and, and we, we're very self-centered too. I, I can talk about that. Um, the other thing about baby boomers is we believe every single thing that we read on social media, and we have no sense of irony. So let me set this up. If you post an Onion article, you guys know what the Onion is because you're all young, young bucks. If you post an Onion article saying that North Korea bombed the Werther's original plant, <laughs> there is going to be chaos at Walgreens. It's going to be like War of the Worlds, folks. Everybody's grabbing that last bag of Werther's. Um, the last thing about social media and boomers, it's minions. Uh, minion memes, that's all we post. Every minion meme that you've ever seen was originally posted by a baby boomer. And we even hire baby boomer um, graphic artists so we can make special minions, like, like uh, girl minions with boobs and stuff like that. So we, th I don't know why we are obsessed with minions because I know that was a children's movie. I, I know it because I took my child to see it. Um, after watching this for so long, the only thing I can think of is the reason why we are so fixed on minions is because they look a lot like the pills we have to take to stay alive. <laughs> baby boomers, man, I, I'm on a theme here. Um, I can tell you one thing baby boomers don't like. They don't like to be guessed at older than they are. Um, I'm included in that. Uh, I will tell you a story of, of, of when I was guessed older than I am. I uh, went to a Speedway gas station um, to get a Diet Sun Kissed Orange because that's a treat I get myself sometimes. And the cashier said, hey, you look older than, I, you look like a uh, older Harrison Ford. And um, at first I felt pretty good about this. I, uh, I was like, Harrison Ford is a good looking guy. He's a famous actor. I went out to my car, and just for the heck of it, I, I Googled Harrison Ford, and um, it turns out he's 76 years old. So he's 76, I'm 55. When I was born, he was drinking a beer. Um, that made me sad, so I went back into that Speedway gas station. I said, young lady, young lady, what is your point of reference? And she said, what? And I said, what's the last Harrison Ford movie you saw? And she said, Blade Runner. And I felt pretty good about that because when he did the original Blade Runner, he was only about 42, so I felt pretty good about that. And then she finished with Blade Runner 2049. And I felt bad again, and I went back out to my car and uh, Googled Botox for men. Um, I'm gonna get in the club for that. It's gonna work. Um, I do understand why young people see old people as just old people, though because it's the reverse is true. I see young people as just young people. Most of you, I don't know how you got here because you have to only have your learner's permit. God forbid that I get held up by a 22 year old dude because I'm just gonna say, oh, you're so cute. You've got that big gun, you are so cute. Where's your mom? You're cute, and then I'll get shot because um, I didn't give him my money. I said he looked cute. Um, I am older, I'm 55. Um, one of the good things about being my age is I've got to spend it with somebody. Um, so I've been with my, uh, my boo for 37 years. Yes, thank you. Um, when you've been with somebody for so long, I think people get jealous because they throw a little shade at you. See, I'm a boomer, but I know all the words because I look them up on Urban Dictionary. Um, they throw a little shade at you. Um, one of the things a lot of people say that know us is, how can you last for so long you have nothing in common? And my answer to that is, um, um, you folks that have everything in common to get together, um, you get bored um, because you're doing all the same stuff and that's why the stuff doesn't work. You know, uh, my uh, bae and I didn't have all that much in common when we got together. And uh, one of the things I used to hate doing was uh, going to the beach. I didn't like sun, sand, water, any of that stuff. 
And I started going with, uh, with my boo, and we'd walk the beach and look for beach class and stuff like that, and now I love it. So, you know, now we have something in common. Um, my shorty did not like um, doing the dine and dash thing. Um, and, you know, we've done it a few times, and um, she's in the dine and dash now. Um, dine and dash is where you go eat somewhere and not pay for it. <laughs> FYI. Um, and, uh, you know, it really gets us, gets us hepped up for that liquor store robbery later at night, so it, work, it works out well. Um, I can say, though, that w nobody can say we have nothing in common, because we, we do have a few things in common. Um, we don't like other people's kids. Um, we raised our own. We don't want to babysit yours. <laughs> right. I, uh, we, uh, human trafficking. <laughs> I can say that we're both against it. And I am so sure on our stance on that, if we were at a party and we got separated and two people, um, two separate people uh, approached us on a human trafficking scheme, I would, uh, I would just say, um, it's a hard no for me, dog, um, because I know that she would say the same thing. So, you know, human trafficking, it's a unison hard no. We're not going to do it. Um, the other thing we have in common, and I think this is important, we don't front. Um, she doesn't front, I don't front, there's no fronting. Um, we don't know what it means, but we don't do it. <laughs> the other thing is, is, okay, I got this guy at work, and he is a play, uh, um, which means um, he gets with a lot of different ladies. And we were talking the other day, and he said, uh, how can you stand having sex with the same person for 37 years? And, um, you know, I didn't even dignify that with a response because I didn't have a microphone in my hand, but now I do, so I guess I will. Um, one thing, when you've been with the same person for 37 years, you get very good at it. The whole sex thing, you, you know what to do. You know where all the erogenous zones are without having to look for them. You can have the lights completely off. Muscle memory takes you right there. It all works. The other thing is, is um, you may think we don't try new stuff. Oh gosh, we try new stuff, um, but we both have some ailments, so we uh, we whiteboard the new stuff. So we'll put we'll put the whiteboard up, and I'll say, honey, how do you think this is going to work on your bad knee? Do you think you're going to be okay? Um, my my sciatica will be fine as long as I put a pillow behind my back. It's all going to be great. The safe word is still stop it. We have made a couple babies with our sex acts. Um, I have two children. Um, they're both grown. Thank you, thank you. Having children, I, it's pretty easy to do. Um, they're both grown now. Um, they are both wildly more successful than me. I am not bragging about this. I am just amazed. My daughter is a vice president of a multinational company. My son is a real rocket scientist for NASA. Really, honest, he is a rocket scientist for NASA. And um, I, just, I, I just look at him, I'm amazed, this is, this is cool, I'm glad they did that, I don't know how. Um, I, I know I was there when they grew up, but I don't remember anything about it, so, um, so you know, I, I, I'm, glad, I'm glad they're doing well. Um, you know, I, I kind of look at it this way, my daughter is in charge of sales in Australia, and my son is in charge of getting rockets off the lift pad correctly, and I'm in charge of negotiating the Comcast bill once a year. Uh, that, I mean, that's the difference in responsibilities we have. I, uh, I approached my kids when I started doing comedy about five years ago, and I said, hey, I'm doing comedy, and they're like, Dad, that's great, that's fantastic. Keep that brain working, buddy. And then they hung up the phone and called my wife and said, what's wrong with dad? He is way too old for midlife crisis. Can you do something about this? And then I, uh, then I uh, told my kids when I got paid for my first gig, and they're like, whoa, dad, that's great. How much did you make? And I had to say, 
Well, after my bar bill, I only owed twelve dollars, so it was it was a pretty good gig. Um, being in a relationship as long as I've been in, um, things have happened. I uh, when I uh, met my wife, I was a pretty big pothead, um, among other things, and um, she didn't like it, so I quit. Um, so I've been away from pot for 37 years now. Um, and I don't want you to think my wife's a prude. Um, I was in the pot, other drugs, crime, all kinds of stuff. So I, I walked away from all of it for love and I, you know, I don't regret it, I don't look back. Um, recently she said, um, you know, if you want to smoke pot again, go ahead. Um, gosh, I've been out of the game for a long time. It's a lot different now. Um, <laughs> Uh, you guys got menus, you got dispensaries, um, you can smoke it, you can eat it, you can vape it, you can do everything with it. And um, I, I just, I can't really make a decision. It's kind of like um, pot changed um, and got much better at the same rate that Oreo cookies did. So all the flavors of Oreos come up, all the new ways you can do pot come up, all the different hybrids and stuff like that. The cookie aisle's bigger, the dispensaries are bigger, it's great. Um, I, I'm very happy for all you potheads. I, I, I'm glad you're enjoying yourself. Because when I stopped smoking pot, we had two varieties. We had mostly seeds and mostly stems. You weren't necessarily guaranteed to get high, but you were guaranteed to get a headache. <laughs> and we had one variety of Oreo. It was called Oreo. I'm Scott Curtis. I'm your host, and I am done talking. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to bring up our first comic. Um, I, I'm going to tell stories about the, the people that I bring up. Uh, Max Tidy started doing comedy. Was it two years ago now? Okay, okay, you know, time is weird for boomers. Um, <laughs> I watched him, um, so when you first do, first start doing open mics, you absolutely suck. I mean, you're absolutely terrible at it. Max did absolutely suck when he first started doing open mics. I was there when he killed it the first time, and I was like, like running over chairs to hug him because I wanted him to make it so bad, and he's been great ever since. So, um, Max is one of my favorites, um, and that's why I have him on the show tonight. He's from Michigan, he works at Journeyman's Distillery, and he's part of the DIY comedy. Check out their Facebook page to know what they're doing, um, because they're putting on a lot of great shows. Um, it's Max Tidy, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> 